I noticed you made it some commentary on this TikTok clip that went viral of um, a mm-hmm. Gen Z employee. It was her first ever job, I guess, her first ever nine to five, and she was not taking it well. So let's just roll that clip. And I'd love mm-hmm. to get your reaction and like take on this whole this whole incident. Sure. I know I'm probably just being so dramatic and annoying, but this is my first job, like my first nine to five job after college. And I'm in person and I'm commuting in the city and it takes me fucking forever to get there. There's no way I'm going to be able to afford living in the city right now. So that's off the table. Like fucking duh. If I was able to walk to work and it'd be fine, but I'm not. So it literally takes me like I leave here. Like I get on the train at 730 and I don't get home till like 615 earliest. And then like I don't have time to do anything. I don't. I want to shower, eat my dinner, and go to sleep. I don't have time or energy to cook my dinner either. Like, I don't have energy to work out. Like, that's out the window. Like, I'm so upset. Oh, my God. Nothing to do with my job at all. But just, like, the 9 to 5 schedule in general is crazy. Being in the office 9 to 5, like, if it was remote, you get off at 5. And you're home and everything's fine. But, like, I'm not home. It takes me long to get home and, like... Like, people that drive to the office, like, it doesn't, you don't get off at five. And I know it could be worse. I know I could be working longer, but, like, I literally get off, it's pitch black. Like, I don't have energy. How do you have friends? Like, how do you have time to, like, meet, like, a guy? I don't know. Like, how do you have time for, like, dating? Like, I don't have time for anything. And I'm, like, so stressed out. And I'm also getting my period. So that's why I'm all emotional. But, like, (laughs) am I so dramatic? It's fine. This is this was roundly mocked, and Liz is over there uh, covering her face. But then you had a different reaction, Kyla. What did you? What was your reaction to that? Yeah, um, <laughs> I feel bad for. Her. Yeah, when my first job out of college, I had to be in the office at like four a.m. because I was on the buy side in Los Angeles, and we had oh, to work wow. East Coast hours. So I, I get it, but like. Um, I think also I wrote this big piece in February about the lack of trust that young people have in institutions. You know, there was a poll from uh, Harvard showing that young people just don't trust anything anymore. There's a lot of nihilism. And I think what she's talking about kind of ties into that. Like, I think for the boomer generation, you kind of would work at a job for 40 years. You would sometimes get a pension. Like it, it was kind of solid. And I think for younger people, you're sort of patching together that kind of stuff. You're usually saddled with some element of student loan debt, which is a whole issue within itself. Um, housing costs are really high. You know, food costs are high. Uh, cost of living is simply high. And so I think that it makes sense that she's feeling that frustration um, because it, I think for a lot of people, it doesn't feel like there's a way out. Like that's your life, you know. How do you think that Gen Z, how, how, this, I, if we can take her as a proxy for a certain type of Gen Z employee who is just looking at the workplace differently and reacting and sort of like uh, yearning for a remote job where she doesn't have to do a commute, um, how do you, is that going to somehow change the workplace? We've already seen the workplace get transformed uh through during the pandemic i think that accelerated a lot of trends that were already in motion um but it's definitely you know the the rise of remote work is uh uh some of that has been durable um how do you think gen z is gonna interface with the workplace like in the longer term so i wrote a piece on this with fast company about a year ago also and it was kind of about this. Uh, I think that Gen Z is it's going to be tough because the, they were in college during online for most of them. And I think a lot of them are not used to having to be in office. Like I graduated with the pandemic. I was in the office for like six months maybe where the mm-hmm. pandemic happened. And that totally changed my relationship with work. And I also yeah. think that there seems to be a desire for the younger generations to have work that surrounds a passion, like something that you deeply care about, um, versus I think boomers were like fine doing a true nine to five where it was like, I, you know, totally compartmentalized from, from my job. And there's a Wall Street Journal article that talks about Gen Z being the tool belt generation and like them going to trade school and like doing all this stuff. And I think that's great. And I would like to see more of that, but I think, you know, in the same way that the housing promise seems to be crumbling, 
So does the college education promise. It's just maybe it doesn't get you as far as it did prior. But don't so many of these issues have to do with unrealistic expectations? I know that's like a very boomery um, response to have to that video, but like that woman crying very theatrically and then broadcasting it to unknown numbers of people, it just strikes me as like, so what, you leave your house at 7.30, you get back at 6.15, like what? I'm a mom. I'm on the clock all the time. I was on the clock at 4 a.m. last night, right? Like it, it's, just, and and most people in high powered jobs um, in any sort of major city or the metropolitan area of any major city, like, yeah, those hours are not especially egregious, right? Like this is sort of a thing that we have long accepted. And we also haven't necessarily attached the idea of like, this has to be missional work. Um, this has to be work where yeah. we find fulfillment in it. Like sometimes, especially when you graduate and you're first starting out, like you do jobs that you do not like. Sometimes you do multiple jobs at once. Sometimes you work hours that you do not like or in a setting that you do not like. And like you live in a place that's not your favorite and not to attempt to force people into this like dues paying type of thing, this idea of like, you know, we all did it. And so therefore you have to like, I think it would be great if we could just like, you know, move further past that. And if that were an avoidable part of life, but like, it strikes me as an unrealistic expectation, people being like, oh, I will get the pay that I want and the job composition that I want and a high degree of fulfillment from it and a high degree of stability. And the market will just happen to value this work super highly and I'll find the perfect match immediately. Like, like how much of this has to do with just like a very pie in the sky image of work? A lot. And that's exacerbated by social media where you get online and you see people who are influencers and their job is getting in a plane, right? And so yeah. I think for a lot of people, they're like, well, why couldn't that be me? Like, why couldn't I have an aspirational lifestyle? And if you're constantly going on TikTok and filming a video of you being upset about work, you're probably scrolling also. And so yeah. you're absorbing all of those ideas about a world beyond what some would consider to be hard work, right? And kind of a quote easy life. But that's like 1% of people. And I, I think that we, because of social media, it seems more common that it is. And people well, get in their head that it's a realistic expectation. Also, it's sometimes very hard to figure out whether or not these like purported influencers are actually making a significant amount of money doing the thing that they're doing, right? Like I think about the uh, Treadwife influencer, Ballerina Farm, who's basically the only quote unquote influencer that I pay attention to. And it's like, she's bankrolled by an extremely wealthy husband whose dad is like the CEO of, I think, Tap Air. Jeff and oh, I thought it was Jeff. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Maybe both, or maybe he's served on the board of one. But like, regardless, like, you know, airline magnet and family money. And so it's like, it's not as if it's, uh, you know, paid partnership, spawn, spawn con that's paying, you know, for their 17 children or whatever, right? And like, to some degree, it's like, maybe we need to wake up to the fact that like a lot of what we are glimpsing is kind of an illusion and not attainable in any way. Although I do have to say that I sort of shared Kyla's like counter reaction to seeing some of these uh, tech CEOs and stuff <laughs> dunking on yeah. her and saying like, you know, just suck it up, sweetie. Like I, I have, I have, uh, you know, some sympathy for her. That's a it, it can be hard when you're just out of college, you're you're new to the workforce. And and also just like the idea yeah. that like it's always been this way, so it's always going to be that way is yeah. like we don't want to be so rigid about it. Like the market has um provided, you know, better, you know, well, putting aside like uh government regulations, just on a purely like market uh, uh process. We've seen the workforce, the way people have worked, the kind of hours they work have have changed over time because of the material improvements that the market provides. And my hope would be that uh, there would be, you know, the kind of those kind of jobs that you're talking about, Kyla, where you're able where people are able to find some sense of mission Mm -hmm. and also like, you know, the, the flexibility is an increasingly valuable part of the compensation package for a lot of people. Yeah. And if we want people to have kids, we have to give them that sort of flexibility. Right. Yeah. Right. Like childcare is so expensive. But this is also sort of part of the working life cycle, I think. I think I would feel differently if it was as if people were, you know, relegated to these grueling um, and very inflexible, very rigid jobs for the duration of their working careers. But I sort of see it as a little bit of like, oh, well, that's what we deal with when we're 22, 23. And then by the time oh. we have... Um, logged a few years and built a reputation for ourselves. We've moved to maybe a different vertical at the same workplace or a different one. And like slowly but surely, as we become paid for our judgment, 
um, versus being a body in a chair, uh, we suddenly just get more leverage over our work situation. Like more things are negotiable when you are more valuable, which is a very like um, sort of like crude way of putting it. But I think that like for whatever reason, like, you know, of course, the 22 year old has way less um, sort of like ability to dictate the terms of her work than a 29 year old would and then a 40 year old would and then a 50 year old would, would like that to me. It's like you take on a different um, role over the course of your working life cycle. And for whatever reason, it seems like a lot of Gen Z's kind of work themselves into a tizzy over the fact that like they don't have the leverage that they want to at the age of 23. Hope you enjoyed that clip from Just Asking Questions. You can watch another one here or the full episode there. We have an audio version of the podcast, which you can subscribe to using the link in the description and subscribe to Reason TV for notifications when these episodes go up every Thursday. Hope to see you then.